tonight from the Coliseum in Oakland California the Red Sox look to keep their bats booming in game two against the A's after exploding for 16 runs last night the most they have ever scored in Oakland. Hi everybody welcome back to Northern California great to have you with us for some late night baseball I'm Dave O'Brien my partner is Steve Lyons Garen Austin joining us in just a couple of moments last night was all about the Red Sox very potent offense Steve tonight it's about pitching which makes sense because Rick Porcello is on the mound you know, what a pleasant surprise this guy has been all season long he leads the universe with 18 victories going for his 19th you know he's on everybody's short list as far as the Cy Young is considered now and when you look at what he's uh, put in front of him tonight the Oakland A's offense this should be a dominating performance from a guy who has been dominating all year he's been terrific and tonight as you say going for 19 wins he already leads the majors in overall victories and of course last night we saw the major league debut of the phenom Yoan Moncada who is drawing a lot of photographers everywhere he goes these days it's funny when you have that kind of talent everybody wants to see it the phenom will be at third base tonight as the Red Sox go for three in a row in Oakland. Nesson is brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's website for deals, Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin', Subaru retailers of New England, Sleepy's, Sleepy's door busters are now through Monday, Sleepy's the only mattress professionals, and by Southwest Airlines, transparency low fares, nothing to hide. Red Sox here in Oakland, home of the A's, to take on the A's here in game two after thumping them last night 16 to 2 the most runs the Red Sox have ever scored in this ballpark. This greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile in four games against the A's this season. Look what the Red Sox have done. 4-0 hitting over 400 averaging 14 runs per game in those four. The Sox currently on an eight game winning streak against the A's dating back to last season but these are historic numbers over four games 
against one opponent. And the Red Sox taking on a right-hander by the name of Daniel Mingdon tonight. He's one and five with a 573 earned run average. Here's a look at the lineup brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's website for deals. Dustin Pedroia is still cooking along. Two hits last night. Then Xander Bogarts and David Ortiz. Mookie Betts in right. Handler Ramirez at first base. Sandy Leon does the catching. Chris Young gets the nod at left. Moncada at third base and Bradley in center field batting ninth against Mignon, who is recalled from Triple A Nashville to start tonight, his second stint at the big league level this year. All right, let's check in on the Oakland A's defense brought to you by DraftKings. One of the worst defensive teams in the American League. Healy at short, Simeon, or at, at third base, Simeon at short, Wendell and Alonzo on the right side of the infield, moving over to the outfield. Davis in left, Smolinski in center, Danny Valencia in right field tonight, Maxwell behind the dish, and Mingdon pitching for the A's. Here are the umpires brought to you by ToyotaCertified.com. Jeff Nelson has the balls and strikes, Brian Knight at first, Laz Diaz at second. Stu Shearwater is the umpire at third base. And we're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP presented by ToyotaCertified.com. Search for your factory back. Toyota Certified used vehicle right now. 63 degrees on the cool side here in the East Bay. And partly cloudy as we get it started. Mingdon with an old fashioned wind up. And a mustache to match. And he delivers strike one to get this one started. This kid should be left handed. Got a little quirkiness about him. He's got the stash working. Gives you a couple different looks with that wind up. Sometimes he'll double pump. There it is. Didn't matter. Line to right field. Pedroia once again starting off a ball game with a solid base hit. How does he do it? I mean, he's on a remarkable run, even for him right now. Ten game hitting streak. And he's 22 for his last 39. Oh, my goodness. Every night, it seems like, he starts off the game with a base hit. Gives the Red Sox an opportunity with guys on base and a chance to score right off the get go. It sends up Xander Bogarts, 306, 17 homers, 78 runs batted in. Pedroia, by the way, is now hit safely. In 19 straight games against Oakland. So, like the rest of the American League, they have not been able to figure him out. What a night for the Red Sox offense last night 16 to 2. The Red Sox have scored 56 runs in the four games against the A's. It's just unbelievable. So, an average of 14 runs per game against Oakland. Mingdon out of Houston, Texas, and he'll deal that one downstairs. Want to let you know that our pitch effects are not operating right now. We're trying to get that fixed for you. Give you a location on the pitches. Red Sox will let them know where the pitch is. <laughs> Xander was on base a bunch last night, and he scored three runs. In there for a strike. He also made a couple of exceptional defensive plays. I think last night, Steve, and, and I think you'd agree with this, he made the best defensive play we have seen him make. Uh, you know, every night he has the opportunity to do that. He just continues to get better and better. Love the over the shoulder grab with no hat. That was that play. Knocked the cap off on purpose to get a better view of that pop up to make the over the shoulder grab. Here's a look from last night if you missed it best part of this play really is that when he realizes that JBJ doesn't have a chance to catch it that's an instinct that you can't teach then he put the afterburners on got rid of the hat and made the play himself in tight on Xander David Ortiz on deck Tampa Bay is in the process of beating Toronto again they're in the ninth inning Tampa Bay has a seven to two lead over the Blue Jays if that holds up and the Red Sox win here tonight the Sox will be in a first place tie with Toronto and a high pop up on the right side of the diamond Alonzo and Wendell there and the second baseman will put it away Wendell with the grab round number one 
So the standings coming into play today with the Orioles three games off the pace. And as soon as that game at Tampa Bay at Tropicana Field becomes a final, we will bring it to you. Baltimore had a 2 0 lead on the Yankees, then they're in the seventh inning in that one. Two outs now in the ninth. And Poppy to hit 316 31 homers 105 RBI's after he drove in three last night and going two for two. No shift really. He takes ball one. Yeah that's pretty extraordinary. A, a very modified shift here. They got the third baseman way off the line. But other than that generally we see the second baseman way out in the outfield. You see the shortstop up the middle changes a little bit when there's a guy on base. But they still do it. And the A's are not doing it. The football lines of course still very visible here in Oakland. Left over by the Raiders and Seattle exhibition game the other night. TV doesn't do the ugliness justice. No, thank goodness. The field was in rough, rough shape yesterday morning, as that one will be in there for a strike on Big Poppy. Mookie bets on deck. And last night's game, Big Poppy kind of beat the shift with two ground balls up the middle, one to the left of Simeon, one to the right. And maybe they decided, hey, we better stop doing this. 2 1. Hammer toward left center, toward the alley. Davis on the run, can't get it. It drops in for a hit. Pedroia rounding, he's into third base. David wants second, there's nobody there, so he's going to pick up a double. That's his 43rd double of the season. And the rest of the American League is about to figure out. It seems like this is true that David Ortiz is about to get very hot again. And he's pretty good, isn't he? That's what they're figuring out. And you know what? This is kind of a ball right here where he beats the shift as well. He hits it into the left center field gap. But because of the way they play him, the left fielder still has to cover the left field side. So he's not as deep into that gap as he normally would be against a left-handed pole hitter. And he drops it right in there in between them. Leading the majors in doubles, extra base hits, and slugging percentage before that two base hit. So, a chance for the Red Sox to jump on Mignon right away. Mookie last night drove in his 98th run, so sitting on 98 with 30 home runs, 300, a 319 batting average. And getting closer to that 100 RBI mark. Runners at second and third. And he'll look at a ball. Well, in the offseason, when Mookie closed his, his eyes at night to go to bed, even he, in his wildest dreams, did not dream of being a 30 100 guy this year. It was one for five, two RBIs last night. And Toronto, by the way, has gotten a little bit closer now. It's a seven to four Tampa Bay lead in the ninth. So not over yet. And now Tampa Bay trying to hang on. Here the Red Sox trying to get off on a quick start against the Oakland A's. And Mignon fires. And a chopper foul. Well, Mignon picked up this crazy windup when he was at Texas A&M. Wasn't pitching all that well. He was looking for ways to fool the hitters. Came up with the old style wind up and started working for him. Not sure when he came up with the mustache. That's nothing new for Oakland A's. No. Probably fingers. Catfish Hunter. A lot of their guys wore them. Oh, remember when Charlie O'Finley, the owner of the team, Paid each guy a hundred dollars, I believe it was. Might have been a thousand dollars. I think it was only a hundred dollars if they would grow a mustache. And then every guy did it, and a lot of them just kept it. Eck did his on his own. Didn't have to be compensated. Three two coming. And slice file back to the screen. Now when Mookie does reach a hundred RBIs. He and David Ortiz will become just the second set of Red Sox teammates with 30 homers, 40 doubles, and 100 RBIs. 
Big Poppy did it with Manny Ramirez in 2004. A long time ago. There's a bullet into left field driving back Davis back he goes over his head it slams into the wall Pedroia is in here comes David Ortiz he will score that's a two run double and a Red Sox strike right away and lead it two to nothing in the blink of an eye. What do you say about when he drives in his hundredth and there it is ninety nine and one hundred for Mookie Betts. Well, this ball was hit so hard it fooled Chris Davis and left hit right at him but he didn't believe it was hit as hard as it was he got a late jump going back now he realizes he can't catch up with it Mookie hits balls that have second gears on them you think you've got them and then they just take off on you Red Sox picking up where they left off last night more history from Mookie Betts. In his incredible season. And now Hanley Ramirez bending away from one high and tight, hitting 283, 19 homers, 87 runs batted in, and nine RBIs in his last three games. One of several Red Sox in this lineup really going good right now. Hanley again said it's about to get dangerous. He likes to use that term when he knows he himself and the rest of the team is going to get hot. I fly to right along the line charging on it Valencia and makes the play actually caught it in fair territory that's back to second base and there are two down right in front of Sandy Leon so the Red Sox at it again against an A's pitcher they've won by scores Sandy against Oakland of 14 to 7 13 to 5 13 to 3 and 16 to 2. Well, you don't know how, how long this guy will stay on the mound, Mingdon, depending on how long the Red Sox let him stay out there, but you don't figure it's going to be very far. In his last seven starts at AAA, they didn't let him go past five innings, whether he was doing well or not. Yeah, they're talking about 100 pitches tonight. But as Bob Melvin says, it depends how he gets there. First one in there for a strike on Sandy Leon. The game against the Tampa Bay Rays and Toronto Blue Jays, that has gone final, and Tampa Bay is. Hung on to win seven to five. Scary. So the Red Sox at the moment are a half game out of first and can be in a first place tie tonight. When all is said and done, in there for a strike on Leon. Sandy 356. He was on base four times last night by going two for three. And walking twice. Trying to pick up Mookie Betts, and that bounces up there. Stopped by Maxwell, the young catcher. We have gone stat crazy and tech crazy with some of the things we look at in the game. And here at the scoreboard, they generally every ballpark you go to, it tells you how fast the speed is going. This breaks it down. That last pitch was 72.6 miles an hour. I'm going to round up. I <laughs> guess. 73 is fine for me. There's a liner sliced down the left field line, but foul. Sandy's been so good this season with men in scoring position, hitting 381 in spots like this. Mingdon's last major league start came on the 25th of July in a 7 to 6 loss to Texas. He only went four and two thirds. He gave up four runs, seven hits. And that's going to be in there for strike three. Down goes Sandy Leon, but not before the Red Sox strike for two quick ones for Rick Porcello tonight going for his 19th victory.
Here's the A's lineup brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Marcus Semien about to lead it off, then Valencia, Volt, and Davis. Yonder Alonso, their first baseman. Healy, a rookie at third base. Wendell, another one at second base. Smolinski is in center, and Maxwell, the catcher, batting ninth. Up against the Red Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Audi dealers, Rick Porcello. What a year he's had. 18 and 3. The major league leader in victories. And one of his 18 wins came against these A's on May 11th at Fenway. 13 to 3. And the Red Sox have already presented him with a 2 0 lead. That one is sucked down the line. Off the bat of Semyon. It's going to drop foul by just a couple of feet. Maybe less. So a long strike there. Valencia on deck. Today's team really challenged. They have lost 13 of their last 19. It's going to be a long September with all the kids they're forced to play. Well, there's a big difference in the way these ball clubs stack up. There aren't a lot of good veteran players on this Oakland A's team to help the kids out. Completely different story with the Red Sox when you look at a guy like Moncada coming up. I mean that job falls right there to Bob Melvin to pretty much do it all on his team without any veteran leadership. One two. I anti you make a great point because with the Red Sox Moncada can walk to the bench and sit next to David Ortiz and has done that many times already and David's so willing and happy to help. Two two. I fly to center. Room for Jackie Bradley back there in what looks to be a chemical dump. <laughs> Let's check in on the Red Sox defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Moncada making his very first major league start at third base. Bogey at short. Pedroia and Ramirez round out the right side of your infield. Out in the outfield, Chris Young making a start in left field tonight. Bradley Jr. just hauling that one in in center. Hookie bets out in right field. Samuel Leone doing the catching. And 18 game winner Rick Porcello on the mound. Facing Danny Valencia. He's one of the A's having a pretty good year. 296 with 15 home runs. But he's in a slump just like so many of them are. Four for his last 21. Briefly a member of the Red Sox. Went for the high one and came up empty. I know Dave he's been briefly a member of a lot of teams. Danny Valencia has always been able to hit. It never seems like he kind of catches on with a club. And stays very long. We well, began the season with Toronto. The A's claimed him off the waiver wire on August 3rd. Ooh, just inside. We don't have pitch zone tonight, but I can tell you that looked like a strike to me. Stephen Vogt on deck. Red Sox ahead 2 0. And a 1 2. He chased it. And that pitch has been so good for Porcello, that high one, that four seam fastball. He has not only climbed the ladder to strike guys out, but he's lived up in the strike zone. It can be dangerous, but it has not been for him. It's been a great weapon for Rick. Right by you. I think his biggest weapon as he squares off against Vote here has been his guts and his guile in tight spots. He's not scared. It has separated him, and he's become a very, very serious Cy Young candidate. Vote is three for nine against him in his careers. He looks at a strike. Hitting 265, five game hitting streak. And one of the few veterans on this team. Bases are empty, and that's right through there for strike. One and two. What a valuable resource for any young player, especially a 21 year old like Moncada, to go to David Ortiz just to talk. Ripped into right, it hangs up, and a catch made by Mookie Betts, and they go one, two, three. Here in the first inning, 2 0 Boston.
true fact this season the Red Sox are averaging the longest time of game in the American League three hours 12 minutes the A's the fastest two hours and 56 minutes twisted tea the hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea be a little twisted you know why that is one team scores 16 runs the other scores two <laughs> might be it but based on that average the Red Sox will have played an extra forty three point two hours of baseball than the A's over the course of this season. No, last night was great but I could have uh, afforded a few less runs and a half an hour off of the game time. Would sure be sure 16 was plenty. This kid make them works fast. They see Chris Young here and then Yohan Moncada and then Jackie Bradley. Moncada did make his major league debut last night in case you missed it. He came on as a pinch hitter to play third base made a fine play at third. Fly to right Valencia closing in a long run sliding to make the play. Now, he played that into a diving play. Got a bad jump didn't really hustle in all that quickly and then realized the ball wasn't hit that hard and had to really turn it up a notch. Well, in the eighth position, third baseman. And here's Moncada. Oh for one with a walk last night and he scored a run. Did strike out. And he comes up with the bases empty and one away. And looks at a strike. When Moncada signed his big deal as an international free agent from Cuba last March, he admitted he thought he would go straight to the majors. <laughs> as he grounds this one right to the first baseman Alonzo for a fast out, two up and two down. He said, soon I realized it's not that easy. You have to go to the minors first. And he's now 0 for 2. Did a pretty good job down there, though, too. Center fielder. Played in just 187 minor league games before his debut last night. Jackie Bradley now 273, 22 homers for Jackie. He was one for four with an RBI last night. The Red Sox win. It's an odd time of night here in Oakland. We're in right field, and we saw Mookie Betts battle with it on the last out of that last inning. And we saw Valencia get a lousy jump on the ball. They're battling the sun and the lights. Doesn't happen too often. There's a little bank of lights there that you have to look right into. And right now, in the setting sun, right over the wall to our left, shining right in the right fielder's eyes. It's a pretty good look at it. Yeah, Mookie Bet struggled with that line drive. That one torched into right field for a base hit. Boy, you just. Get the feeling that Jackie Bradley is going to have a big September. We saw that last night. He was locked into a lot of pitches, hit the ball hard, made a couple of hard outs last night. Now Loves to hit against the American the League West. He has been tearing the cover off it against this division, and now talk about tearing the cover off the ball. Here's Dustin Pedroia, one for one tonight with a single and a run, batting average up to 325 now. With a 10 game hitting streak. With Jackie on first, a huge hole on the right side again. Now you see the difference with first baseman holding on and the big hole between first and second base. Runner holds and it's in there for a called strike. Red Sox have won eight straight against Oakland going back to last year and they're averaging 14 runs a game this season through four games against Oakland. It's been 115 years since a major league team has scored 12 or more runs against one opponent in four straight games. Ooh. It shouldn't happen that way. Red Sox are dominating this club like nobody's business. Now Dave here's one of the reasons why there's such a huge hole on the right side for Pedroia. Him being a right handed hitter and Jackie a threat to steal. Wendell has to stay close to second base. He's the guy that's got to cover on a stolen base there. So he can't go wandering to the right side like he'd like to to protect against Pedroia going the other way. Raked but foul. The way it's going these days for Dustin Pedroia. Even the foul balls right on the button. 
I mean, it's been a while since he's been this hot for this long a period of time. Because in the last couple of years, couple injuries of years. have gotten in the way, but he's been so healthy this season. Those hands are so strong. He's had periods even when he was bothered by the hand injuries where he was incredibly hot, but nothing quite like this. In some time, he hit 406 in August. Scalding. Bradley's on the move. He takes off and it's pop foul out of play. Tomorrow, 2:30, an all-new episode of Nesson Clubhouse. We'll learn all about Dustin Pedroia's specialized cleats. Let's find out how important quick reflexes are for an infielder. That's tomorrow, 2:30, on Nesson Clubhouse, presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. Three-two. Fly to right field along the line. That might bleed. Valencia can't get to it, but in foul territory. He's not the most confident outfielder. <laughs> Moving toward those bullpens. One of those ballparks where they're right on the field in foul territory. Sun is down now, so he puts the glasses up on the top of his hat. And you're talking about Pedroia's cleats that he tries out there on Nesson Clubhouse. I saw him. The other day before this road trip putting some cleats on and coming out into the dirt and testing them. See if he can turn and twist in them. There goes Jackie Bradley and another one ripped down the line but foul quickly into the other bullpen. Got a poll question about those bullpens. Our Dunkin Donuts poll question should bullpens be banned from being on the playing field. Text one for yes, two for no. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. Three, two again, and he walks him. That was an amazing at bat right there. They would try to go away from him. He'd hit it down the right field line. They try to get in his kitchen, and he'd smoke it down the left field line. Finally, you throw enough pitches. And he spits on the one that you try to get him to chase, Nobody. and he ends up on first Number base. Two, Sander. It's just been amazing. Bogarts. Now Xander Bogart's looking to make him pay for that walk. He is 0 for 1 with a pop to second. Bradley at second, Pedroia at first, 2 0 Red Sox. Well, Dave, what do you think about the bullpens? Are you all unhappy that they're on the playing surface? No, I'm not. To me, it doesn't matter that much. Me either. It's actually sometimes way easier for us to tell who may be coming into the game. Yeah, most of the time, that's true. In there for a strike, there's some ballparks where it's impossible from the press level. If you see the bullpen behind a wall, you, you have no idea who's out there. Of course, there are ballparks, too. Like in San Francisco, universally known as one of the greatest parks in all of baseball, they forgot to put bullpens in. One one in there for a called strike. They had to add them later, and they added them basically where you see them here in Oakland, just off to the side. Just be on the end zone here. <laughs> Bingdon trying to get out of this jam, first and second. And a wave and a miss, and down goes Xander Bogarts for strike three, and the Red Sox will not score in the second. Still 2 0 Boston.
for two in the series. Red Sox up 2 0 over the A's. Steve Lyons, Dave O'Brien, Garen Austin with you. And this is Chris Davis in the box against Rick Porcello, who breezed through the first inning. 1 2 3. Davis could be dangerous. 34 home runs and 85 runs batted in, but like so many of them, he's in a skid right now. Four for his last 24 of the last seven games. And he was 0 for 4 last night. 34 homers. Look at Trumbull at 41. Baltimore leads the Yankees 2 0 there in the eighth inning. As mentioned, Toronto has lost again. So the Red Sox can tie for first tonight. Porcello's last seven road starts, he has gone three and one with a 2.49 ERA. He's really stepped it up. You know what he's done at home, where he hasn't lost all year. You can't beat him at home, and you don't have a real good chance of beating him on the road. 13 and 0 at Fenway. He's not taking that cap off all season, <laughs> and it shows. 2-2. Lunging fly ball into right center field. Betts is there, and Mookie will make the catch. Nice pitch. Let's get downstairs to Garen Austin. Garen? Well, thanks, OB. Well, Stephen Wright spoke to reporters earlier, and he said that his shoulder is just not 100%. He said he tried to pitch through the pain and the discomfort, but he's not helping the team when he's only 50%. Wright said that the pain is not getting any better, and that's why he wanted to get a second set of eyes on his shoulder. Right now, they're working on getting a second opinion with doctors in Los Angeles, but they're having a hard time due to the holiday weekend. Wright said that it's been tough, but he's trying to take things day to day and not think worst-case scenario, although it is tough because it is his shoulder. And guys, he said right now his focus is on getting back to being closer to 100%. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, you talked to him before the game, Steve, and he continues to talk about how sore that is. Yeah, he says, you know, he hasn't really lost strength. He feels strong, but it hurts. And, you know, that's a, a tough thing to deal with. So he just he didn't have much behind his pitches. And he said, look, I, I can't go out there and be giving up five runs in the first, in, first inning. And, and hope that my guys can come back. He said that the next few innings that he pitched, the, the next five innings, he said, I was lucky. I still didn't have good stuff. I lucked out. Mm. Well, having such an outstanding season, too, before the shoulder injury. 0 2 and a ground ball into the shift, and Pedroia fires on again. Two up, two down. Rosen Fenway returns to Boston in January of 2017. Fans can enjoy two exciting outdoor hockey East doubleheaders, January 7th and 14th. Tickets are on sale right now. Visit RedSox.com slash Frozen Fenway for more information. Red Sox ahead here, 2-0 in the second. Ryan Healy now, the third baseman at 287 with six home runs, has a little bit of power. They do like this kid. Quick hands, a little pop. And you're talking about the, the Stephen Wright not making the start. The Red Sox are being a little coy as to who will fill in. A lot of the people speculating that it will be Clay Buckholtz. In fact, he took batting practice today. I think you'd write that down. Which would lead you to believe that he may be a starter in a National League ballpark. And Clay has been effective, very effective his last couple of starts. Yes, he has. Been effective in a lot of the roles that they've put him in, in since the first half. Tap to third. Big hop from Ancada. Shut off his arm last night. He's got a pretty darn good one, and it's another one, two, three for Rick Porcello.
Top of the third in Oakland just in time to see David Ortiz climb in against Mingdon the right hander the Red Sox got to for two runs on three hits including a pair of doubles in the first and one of those by Big Poppy is 43rd double and Mookie's 100th RBI. Wow. So both Betts and Ortiz with 100 RBIs Andy Ramirez now at 87 should join them. Round ball that went to the other side of the shifts and Healy with time to get him for the out. David Ortiz final regular season stop is only on Nesson. Three days of nonstop celebration live from Fenway. Don't miss a minute of the on field Nine. ceremonies plus Number special pregame and postgame shows. It's the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. That is Friday September 30th through Sunday October 2nd and it's only on Nesson. In games that will be extremely meaningful you might think. Mookie Betts now two run double first time up. He's now reached base in 21 consecutive games. He's driven in 25 over that span. And he's hitting about 385. Red Sox have a shot at a 900 run season. On the chop to third, Healy slings it over there to get him. In 2013, the Red Sox won it all, and they scored 853 runs. 2007, the Red Sox won it all. They scored 857 runs. In 04, the Red Sox World Championship team scored 949 runs. This team with a legit chance to get to 900 or better. Here's Hanley now 0 for 1 with a fly to right. And at this base, the Red Sox are going to have three 100 RBI players. With Ramirez closing in on it. That should translate to some good things. Any way you slice it, 900 runs. That is getting it done offensively. Ooh. That one tag deep to left way back kiss it goodbye into the stands in the blink of an eye goodness wow. did he hit it number 20 and he's driven in 88 runs and the Red Sox lead it three to nothing it's about to get dangerous he says that is dangerous if you're sitting in the left center field seats I'll tell you I don't think you should not stick yourself in front of this ball out there in those seats. This ball is absolutely waffled. You know how quickly this thing gets out of here, Dave. Get out of the way. You're going to hurt yourself. Oh, man. He's now homered in four of his last seven games. And 10 RBIs in his last four games. Red Sox in front 3 nothing Speedway proud to be New England's first choice for value and convenience for every Red Sox home run this season Speedway donates to Boston Children's Hospital stop by a Speedway near you and pick up your free speedy rewards card to start earning points today. Amazing. Goodness gracious I was out of here in a hurry the amazing plate coverage that that he has right now we know he likes to go the other way quite often. He'll get out in front and pull a ball like he did right there, but he won't be off balance when he does it. Watch the plate coverage he has. Watch the stride towards the pitcher, and then look at that. He's reaching for this ball almost on the outer half of the plate and then just buggy whipping it to left center field. Leon tags a line drive into the alley. That splits the outfielders all the way up against the fence. He's into second base with a stand up double. Red Sox starting to do damage once again with two down as they did last night. Yeah. A nice little double by Leon, but it wasn't a home run. So we're going to show you some more of what Hanley did here. You see it from the side. Look at the balance in his swing. Doesn't get fooled. Look at the leverage right. that he creates with that huge follow through. 
Just one time in my life I would like to have hit ball like that. My goodness. Boy, it didn't make that typical home run sound because it almost sounded like someone hit a, a 400 yard drive, you know? <laughs> Off the tee. Got a ting, and it was gone. Is Chris Young 0 for 1 with a fly to right? And Leon at second. Guys in the truck are asking if maybe we're playing at home. Does that ball just smoke the top of the green monster in left center field? Ends up being a double or maybe even a single because he hit it so hard? Might have been a single. Or did it have enough height to get up and over? But he is just crushing. It may have been a long single at home. Closing in on 100 RBIs himself. Young 268 coming in with six home runs. Looking to pick up his 19th RBI. And lays off a pitch downstairs. I like the guy out there in the left field bleachers all dressed up in his green A's jacket with a glove and everything. And he kind of reached up to try to catch it but it was already past him before he even thought about it. And he had 400 feet to react. <laughs> you know, I'm glad he was a little slow. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't try around. and get in front of it. He could have done some serious damage there. That's in for a strike on Young. Moncada on deck. There he is. The guy with his back turned to you right there is telling everybody right now how he almost caught that. Watch him react. Like he tries to get it right over him, but then he knows probably has a back injury now. And that's going to miss for ball four. And I think he was actually dialing his chiropractor. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine a ball traveling 400 feet already and then you're still late to jump up and catch it? Well, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, but I can. I'm with him. <laughs> He's out signing autographs and stuff right now. What's going on? Now batting. Taking one more look at him. 65, Johan Mancaro. Zip. I think that stung a little bit. <laughs> He's saying, hey, who did get that ball anyway? So first and second from Ankata, who is 0 for 1 in this one with a tapper to first base, looking for his first major league hit. That one dropped a strike, and the runners will hold. At the beginning of this series, we talked about the condition of the field and how low cut the grass is right now and how quick it would be that ball that Leon hit would not have been a double at Fenway Park it wouldn't have squirted between the outfielders but here it will get to the wall quickly the 0 one <laughs> Makata switch hitter he left Cuba with the government's permission to sign a free agent contract after signing with the Red Sox, he came to Fenway last September, pronouncing himself very, very happy. Red Sox doling out to him $31.5 million. And then had to pay a matching penalty. So around the 60 mil range. Quite expensive. But they believe they have a superstar in waiting here. How many years? Chop foul there at home plate, caught a piece of his foot. That was in the sixth year range, which, if he turns out to be anything close to what he's shown so far, that would be a bargain. Mentioned this last night that he had been slowed a little bit by a sprained ankle in August. And so it had not been stealing as many bases, but had 45 stolen bases in the minors this year with 15 home runs. And he chops that one fair down the line for his first major league hit down into the corner. That's going to bring in a run. Leon is coming in. Here comes the second run. Young will score, and he's into second base. Mercado with a double, and he does a lot of damage with that first major league hit. To drive in a pair of runs. <laughs> we saw him last night. He did strike out on a fastball, and that fastball looked like it got past him 
pretty well. This is a pitch that he almost picks right out of the catcher's glove and hits it down that line for a double. Watch how long he waits, gets that way deep in the strike zone and just bounces it down the left field line. Nicely done. And Davis has trouble with it. He bobbled it, so they will charge him with an error. So Moncada picks up one RBI on the play, the second run scoring on the error. But his first major league hit, he's got a lot of firsts out of the way very quickly, isn't he? Number 25, Jackie Bradley Jr. Same thing when Ben Intendi came up. Those firsts were flying. So the Red Sox with a 5 nothing lead added again here in Oakland. Jackie Bradley with a base hit his first time up. And Moncada, a guy who can really, really run. He's been clocked at 6.6 .6 seconds in the 60 yard dash. Sounds fast. It is. We saw that last night with his speed around the bases. Even after he stopped and restarted, he got going in full stride very quickly. And he runs easy. He's he's a fluid runner. I remember when Matt Kemp first came up to the big leagues. Very, very fast, but he did everything hard. It was a rough run. This guy's got some style. I mentioned this earlier about Jackie Bradley. Lots of success against the AL West. His last 33 games against the West, 321, nine homers, and 34 RBIs. He has been punishing this division as he looks at a ball. So the Sox in front, five zip. Sometimes, if you want to see how locked in a hitter is, you don't look at the pitches he swings at. You look at the ones he takes. You look at how he's tracking the ball and if it's a bad pitch out of the zone if he's just kind of just watching it go or is he striding into it. Is he getting fooled at all by any of those pitches. If you're locked in as a hitter when you swing the bat you're going to hit it. It's the ones you don't that tell you how locked in you really are. Dustin Pedroia on deck. It just seems like the Red Sox can score at will against the Oakland pitching staff. It's clear. <laughs> and all the damage in this inning has been done with two down a home run by Hanley, the double by Sandy Leon, the walk to Young, run scoring double by Moncada. There's another one ripped into right center field for a base hit. Moncada will score easily. He comes flying in. Jackie Bradley with his second hit. He's driven in 77 runs on the season. Red Sox in front six to nothing. Oh my gosh. Every guy on the team wants Mankata hitting in front of them because they know he can score from anywhere. That's a lot of RBI opportunities when he's on the bases for you. Jackie locked in ball away from him drilling it right back up the middle. And that'll be the last pitch that Mingdon throws here tonight. Melvin is out to go to the bullpen. John Axford will be brought in and we'll take the break as well. The Red Sox are doing it once again here in Oakland and now lead it six to nothing in the top of the third and we'll have more in a moment.
you buy your Eastern Lexus dealers, you didn't quite get to 100 pitches, which is what they wanted for him tonight, as the Red Sox knock him out of the game to the tune of six runs, five earned on eight hits. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Kia. They go with John Axford. Appearing in his 58th game, four and four, a 4-4, four, four, two earned run average. There are two down. As he does battle with Dustin Pedroia, who has singled and walked. Axford, big league veteran with Milwaukee, the St. Louis, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Colorado. He's been around the last several years. Used to be the closer for Milwaukee. Top notch. Used to be a cell phone salesman. Grabbed him off the scrap heap, was playing beer league baseball for men <laughs> somewhere, and he got a tryout and dazzled. And guess what? Another base hit for Dustin Pedroia as he guides that one to the opposite field. The throw comes in a second, but Bradley back in. And another multi hit game for Dustin Pedroia. An exact same situation that Pedroia was in his last at bat with the big hole between first and second. Because Wendell can't move over. Wendell wants to be moving farther to his left, but he can't. Now He's got to cover second base two, if Bradley Sandy. steals. Okay. That opens it up even more. Now he can't get to the ball, and Petey's smiling. He's two for two with a walk. So Bogart's next, and he becomes the ninth Red Sox hitter in the third. And the Red Sox ahead six to nothing. And I was thinking that maybe El Tuve could not be caught for the batting crown, but maybe hold the phone for a minute the way Pedroia is swinging it. <laughs> With a little less than a month to play, he was 24 points behind El Tuve going into play today. El Tuve at 348, Pedroia at 324, but Dustin Pedroia is not slowing down. He's getting, you know, two, three, four hits every single night. The tough part at this point in the season is that you have so many at bats, you don't move the needle that much, good or bad. Oh, shot up out. the middle into center field. Another run will score. Runners will hold it first and second as Jackie Bradley comes churning in. Xander Bogarts ripped that one, and it almost took Axford with it. Boy, this is what you call chuck and duck right there. It's almost getting scary the way the Red Sox hitters are smashing the baseball. Look out. Watch out. Oh, my goodness. Axford was caught in an area where he couldn't really move. Oof. I think he thought the ball was going to hit him. Now batting. Number 34. So now David Ortiz hitting for the second Ortiz. time in this inning. He grounded out to the third baseman to begin this frame. He's also doubled and scored. 7 0 Boston. All five runs of this inning scored with two outs again. One of the best two out run producing teams in all of baseball. David now has 75 extra base hits after his first inning double. That leads the majors. Ortiz jumping over Albert Pujols and in a second place in the American League RBI race last night. Two behind his friend Encarnacion of Toronto. He's having a terrific year. There's a shot deep to center. Smolensky back turning. It's off the wall. Pedroia is in to score. Bogarts is going to score easily and it's another double for Big Poppy. As the Red Sox continue to run away and hide from the A's. And now David with 107 runs batted in and almost got it out of here. His second double tonight, 44 for the season, 9 to nothing. My goodness. Look at that. That is not a bad pitch. It's a sinking fastball down and away from Poppy. He stays right with it, thinks about going up the middle. Hits it in the middle of the field. He's about three feet from this thing going out for a three run homer. He'll take the two run double. Man, that was close to getting out. 
very nearly his 32nd home run. Here's Mookie Betts now. He already has a two run double. He's gone one for two. He's grounded out to third in this inning. Red Sox doing it again to Oakland. Now I've said this for a long time this season. When you look at the contending teams in the East, when you look at Toronto, if they don't hit the ball out of the ballpark, they don't really win games. Same thing with Baltimore. The Red Sox don't have to hit the ball out of the park in order to win games. They've done it all year. Check swing. Did he offer? He did not. With these last couple of nights, it feels like batting practice for the Red Sox. Well, we certainly understand that the Oakland A's and the franchise right now is in a down time. This is not a very good ball club, but you still have to hit it. Chop foul. You got a lot of guys in this Red Sox lineup, to your point, who are seeing the baseball really, really well right now. Everybody talks about playoff baseball. You start playing the best teams instead of all the teams. But good teams do lunch up on bad teams. That's how you get to the playoffs. That one ran in on him. He knocked it foul. On deck, Hanley Ramirez, who has homered in this inning. Ruined my scorecard. I have to redo everything now because they batted around again. All the two outs. Sorry, no one was going to be able to read that anyway. Oh, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you have the ugliest scorecard I've ever seen in my life. Without question. I have no idea what any of that says. Now that's by design, actually. You don't want me peeking? I don't want anyone peeking. Not that you'd ever have any hope of reading with my penmanship. It is ugly. Yeah. You know. Turn that thing around. Well, that's it right there. And you, if you what got a real close up on it, you'd, you'd still, you know. What does it say? I'm not sure if it goes this way or this way. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. There's a lot of runs on it, though. There is that. Have been here in Oakland the last two nights. Now you have to cross out the fourth inning and make it the third and, you know, start all over again. Yep. And it's been a lot of fun to watch the Red Sox swing the bats once again up nine zip. And a wave and a miss, and Mookie Betts down on strikes, and that ends it. But the Red Sox explode again. David Ortiz with a couple of more RBIs give him 107, nine to nothing, Boston. How's it going? Today we're going to be comparing the goal. September 16th for an introspective look at Big Poppy's career. David Ortiz, The Journey, presented by Foxwoods Resort Casino. Don't miss the premiere of David Ortiz, The Journey, 11 p.m. on Friday, September 16th.
There's going to be some fantastic shows about Big Poppy and his life. Rick Porcello handed nine runs to work with. Wendell pops it up. Bogart's out coming on Bradley. Jackie there for the one handed catch. And Porcello pitching as if it's nothing nothing has retired seven in a row. Well that's the way he's going to go about it. I mean if you think about it the last few starts that Porcello has he has had some excellent run support. And he just goes about his business. His last 11 starts he's 10 and one a 240 earned run average. Every starting pitcher loves it when his team gets him some runs. But you you like to see him do it as quickly as possible. He's been sitting over there for a while. Now the last time he faced this Oakland team was back in May at Fenway. The Sox got him 13. <laughs> Smolinski looks at a strike. 265 hit it with seven home runs. Red Sox just put up seven. He flares that one into right field. Mookie bets for the catch, and there are two down very quickly. Don't miss WB Mason X Rings live right after the game. Adam Peller and Jim Rice break down tonight's game. You'll hear from Rick Porcello and from John Farrell. Whatever, whenever, wherever, who but WB Mason. You know, it's a little bit impressive to watch here, even though the A's are just getting bounced. Is that, you know, the mark of a Bob Melvin team is mostly. His teams will hustle. See these guys hit some weak pop ups. They run them out. They continue to hustle. And I think if you're a team that is getting beat up on, that's the one thing you can bring to the ballpark with you all the time is your attitude and your hustle. Well, he's won in other places. Yes, he has. It's been tough on Bob Melvin here. Maxwell, a catcher, hitting just a buck 25 with no home runs. Maxwell doesn't have to worry about one thing with the Red Sox right now. In the minor leagues, he had a 39 percent throwout percentage. In the major leagues, although very few opportunities, he hasn't thrown out anybody. The Red Sox won't be running anymore right now, though. Not up nine to nothing. Rick Porcello bidding for his 19th win of the season. Now you can watch the drive to the pennant. With MLB.TV Premium, watch every out-of-market game live on HD. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Porcello trying to make it nine up, nine down, and left that one high. Just a reminder, our pitch zone is down tonight. We're still efforting to fix that for you. Too high. Back to back, he went upstairs trying to get Maxwell to chase. It's been a trademark of his most of this season. Rick with one strike out. He got Valencia in the first inning. Used the 2 2. And he's filled up the count. It was very few walks all season long. Walked all of 28 men in over 180 innings. It's been the key to him. Doesn't give up many home runs, doesn't walk anybody. Foul out of play. And typically, he's had kind of a rough time here in Oakland. He has struggled here in the past. One and four, lifetime in the Coliseum with an ERA at 513. That's struggling. But tonight, he's getting a lot of runs. Here's the 3 2. Cut on a miss. Down he goes. His second K. Gets him in order for the third consecutive inning.
Red Sox hitting 420 against him, 76 hits, 65 runs. Look at all the home runs and trying to make it nine consecutive wins over Oakland going back to last year. The amount of runs they've scored this season against this team is mind boggling. Averaging 14, well on their way to that number again tonight. And Ramirez with a bullet of a home run last inning, his 20th. And at this pace, the Red Sox are going to have three 100 RBI players in Ortiz, Betts, and Ramirez. Of course, David and Mookie are already there. Boy, watch and learn right here. That is picture perfect for a right handed hitter. By the way, none of the most recent three world championship teams for the Red Sox, 04, 07, or 13, had more than two 100 RBI men. This team could have yeah. three, and probably will. At least three. I think with a big month in September, Xander Bogarts could get there. Maybe even Jackie Bradley. But a three would be something. Check swing and it's inside. So he will take ball four. Time of the keep it moving moment now, brought to you by Old Dominion. Oh, join the hit parade. There's Hanley, San Leon with a double, Mikado with a double, Bradley, Petey's got a few, Bogart's up the middle, Big Poppy's got two doubles. Are you kidding me? Come on. Brought to you by Old Dominion, helping the world keep promises. Here's Sandy Leon, he has struck out and doubled. Part of the uprising last inning when the Red Sox poured across seven. The attendance tonight, 30,045. <laughs> On Jose Canseco rookie bobblehead night here in Oakland. Jose making a, an appearance himself. Looking every bit as big as he did when he played. Foul out of play. You said back in the day, and he's talked about his steroid use. He's written about it. Pretty much spilled the beans on the entire situation. He did. Talk about a lot of other players using two. But back in those days, the days of the Bash brothers, him and McGuire, those guys, as that one is up the middle for a base hit, Sandy Leon with a multi hit game. That on opposing teams, you guys would all come out and watch them take batting practice. Yes, we did. In those years, my rookie year was 85. McGuire's, I believe, was 86. You'd watch those two guys take batting practice. I sat right here, the top step of that now, visiting buddy. dugout, and I watched in batting practice Canseco snap, a, take a swing. The bat snapped in half. The bat end went up all the way down to their bullpen, and the ball went out of the ballpark in left center field. You rarely see a guy hit a ball out of the park when he breaks his bat. The strength of those two guys, there they are, the Bass brothers, unbelievable. And we all kind of wonder, well, what are they doing? How did oh, they get that strong? Found that out after a while. As Chris Young gets in, runners at first and second, it trickles past Maxwell to catch her, and the runners are going to move up to second and third. I don't know. I still got to think back as we just saw Canseco here. As I said, he's every bit as big right now as he was when he was playing. But you think he is? Did you see him? He's huge, he's but enormous. hard to keep that kind of girth on him. But a little point has to be getting knocked out by Danny Bonaducci, right? Yeah. In their little boxing match. I would think that's right up there with the low point. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't be a good thing. Wild pitch puts two men in scoring position now for Young. And this game is only in the fourth inning. And he is the only Red Sox hitter tonight who does not have at least one hit. Red Sox have a dozen. Well, I'll give him a chance. If he gets one now, he's one for three. <laughs> and could drive Actually, in a couple of two. runs. Axford, first man out of the bullpen. 
That one tied him up inside on the swing and a miss. Well, you can see the thinking too by John Farrell to have Chris Young in the lineup today. Facing the righty, we know that he generally faces left-handers. But if you don't get him into some games and keep him fresh and keep him in there, when he faces the lefties coming up, he'll be rusty. Jumps back in tight again. Tomorrow, 4:05, Eduardo Rodriguez against Kendall Graveman, a right-hander, who has pretty good numbers. He's 10 and 9, a 3.96 ERA. Kendall Graveman is the only starter left from their original starting rotation when this season began. Bounding ball and speared by Axe, but the runners will have to hold the lob on to first base to get him. Henry Ramirez wisely retreating to third base. And that is out number one. Let's go down to Garen. Thanks, OB. Well, last night was a very big night for Robbie Scott, who also made his major league debut. He said it was really exciting, but he was really just focused on the task at hand and making a good first impression. Scott told me that he had a big group of friends and family who made the trip out to watch him, and he said it really meant a lot reading all the messages after the game. Now, he had an unusual path to get to the major leagues, and he actually got his start in an independent ball by a team that was managed by Jose Canseco. Scott told me that Canseco pulled him into his office after a first, he saw him a couple times, and said you do not belong in independent ball. I'm going to do what I can to get you out of here. Scott said that he was instrumental in his career and so kind of funny that he makes his major league debut on a weekend where they are honoring Canseco and handing out this bobblehead. Guys. <laughs> Indeed. I thought this is a pretty good likeness. Jose is a rookie as well and is Robbie. Pitch well last night. He did. Unorthodox style like his stuff. Moncada taking a big swing and fouls it back. He has <laughs> his first major league hit. There's a look at it. Robbie's done a great story that when he first arrived at independent ball and, and Canseco was the manager, the league went on strike. They were about to strike, and, and the players decided we're going to switch positions. The pitchers, they're going to play the positions, and the position players are going to pitch. And Canseco said, the first guy, the first pitcher who hits a home run, I'm going to hand him 500 bucks. And somebody did it. <laughs> and he immediately whipped out $500 and gave it to the kid. Which was a big payday in the independent league. Huge payday. That's a month. Second and third. Red Sox ahead here, nine to nothing. Really pouring it on on the Oakland A's for the second consecutive game here in Oakland. And the fifth straight game head to head this season. And a wave and a miss by Moncada, and down he goes, strike three. So he strikes out for the second time in his major league career. In front of Jackie Bradley Jr., who is two for two. Now batting. Tomorrow at three, don't Jackie miss Red Bradley Sox Bradley first Jr. pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. Adam and Jim will take a closer look at Moncada's path to the majors. Jackie with a base hit each of his last two trips, and he drove in a run the last time and scored. So he's up to 77 RBIs and takes a ball. Tampa Bay defeated Toronto 7 to 5. So the Sox win. They're tied for first. They've got a good start on it. Dustin Pedroia on deck. He has two hits. David Ortiz has two hits. Sandy Leon has two hits. And Wendell at second base playing way back in the grass. Taking a little bit of a chance if Jackie doesn't hit one too hard to the right side, he'd beat it out. Checked his swing, and that's a cross for a strike. Baltimore defeated the Yankees as Smith gets going in their bullpen. Two nothing Orioles. So they're two games out. The Orioles are. They just keep hanging in there. Chop toward the middle. Semyon behind the bag and from the other side throws to get him and retire the side. So the Red Sox don't score in this inning, but Porcello has plenty. It's nine nothing Boston.
bottom of the fourth inning, Porcello's first pitch is outside for a ball on Semyon, the leadoff man, nine to nothing Sox. And the A's don't have a base runner yet against Rick Porcello. He got Semyon to fly out the first time center field. Things looking pretty, pretty hopeful for Mr. Porcello to be 19 and 3 at the end of the ball game here tonight. Leading the majors in victories. Whoa. Did not get that call. Where is that? He'd like to know too. No pitch effects today. I can tell you that was a pretty good pitch. There's two one rattle foul to plate. Valencia on deck and then vote. Porcello going to work. I mean, this is a guy that. Knows he's got a big lead just attacking the zone. Here's the pitch that got called a ball. Ooh. 2 2 to Semyon. He has home run pop with 23. In fact, he's hit the most home runs by an A shortstop since Miguel Tejada at 27 13 years ago. See if he decides to climb the ladder with that fastball or keep it down. So it makes a guy like Porcello so tough is he can force him it up. But you, you know, he's known as a sinker ball, ground ball pitcher. He's gone away from that a little bit. He's been very effective doing it, but he can still go back down there or throw the breaking ball down in the zone. Chopped to Makata to his left and on target. One man gone here in the fourth inning. And tomorrow at 8.30, don't miss the ultimate Red Sox show presented by AAA. We have the best moments from the past week of Red Sox baseball, plus a recap of the WEEI Nesson Jimmy Fun Radio Telethon. That's tomorrow at 8.30 only on Nesson. One out for Valencia, who whiffed in the first inning. Porcello has retired 10 in a row to start his night. He is four for 16 against Porcello. And the Sox with one more game left with the Oakland A's. And that'll do it for the season series tomorrow afternoon, and then it's on to San Diego to face the Padres. Mile high pop up and there's Bogarts. And close to the 50 yard line to put it away. Boy, Porcello has just stayed above the strike zone against Valencia and he just keeps swinging at those pitches up. Struck him out the first time, pop up this time. Sox fans looking for the best seats to the biggest games? Check out the official Red Sox ticket resale marketplace at RedSoxReplay.com. It's the best place for season ticket holders to sell their tickets when they can't make it. To the game. Not many home games left, as you know. And the Sox return off the trip after the final three games in Toronto. And the vote takes strike. It'll be three with Baltimore and four with the Yankees. Then the Red Sox have another long trip all inside the division before those last three home games of the regular season with Toronto. September 30th and October 1st and 2nd. Obviously, the schedule for the Red Sox was pretty imbalanced between the first and second half, but of course, they had an inordinate amount, amount of home games. High fly, deep shot to center, but Bradley backing up all the way to the wall, leaps up, and he's got it. Jackie Bradley with the catch. One, two, three, they go again. Still nothing doing against Rick Porcello tonight in Oakland.
back moment honoring the 86 Red Sox game number 135. The Red Sox would beat the Twins 3 to 2. Marty Barrett hit a walk-off single in the victory. Big lead for the Sox here as we go to the top half of the fifth inning in Oakland. The A's don't have a hit tonight. This is Chris Smith, the right-hander we saw last night, came up with the Red Sox. Pitched for Boston in 2008, however briefly. Ground ball behind third base by Pedroia, slinging it is Healy on target for the out. Pedroia is retired for the first time tonight after coming up with two hits and a walk. Back to the Jackie Bradley play moments ago. A nice leaping catch up against the fence. That's a tough one to judge when you get back there. He might have had one more step before he had to leap there, but you're kind of feeling for the wall. Still made the play. That ball really traveled. I didn't think it was going to carry that fall at, at all. Now, typically a night here, it does not. Xander Bogart's one for three with a single his last time up. That drove in a run, so he's up to 79 runs batted in, hitting 306. And David Ortiz on deck. A's ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox tickets. With the biggest selection from bleachers to boxes. Visit aceticket.com or call 1 800 My Seats. Tried to hold up, but he went, according to the first base umpire, Brian Knight, and he rings up Xander Bogarts for the strikeout. So there are two men out here in the fifth inning. In front of Big Poppy. David off to a great start Number tonight with a pair of doubles. David He's gone two for three, Ortiz. two RBIs. Hitting 318. Just scalded that ball to center field earlier tonight. They narrowly missed a home run with that second double. In the third inning, which the Red Sox scored seven times. And just hammering away at this Oakland pitching staff. Last night it was the sixth inning where the Red Sox really exploded. And that has actually become the highest scoring inning for the Red Sox, supplanting the first inning. Which for so long was their number one scoring inning. <laughs> yeah. Boy, they used to score two runs every night in the first. Good recipe for a win. Shattered bat. Base hit into center field. David left with a sword. <laughs> the other half of the bat out to the side of the pitcher's mound. And he has three hits tonight. Well, let's check out the pitch sequence to David Ortiz and that at bat they stayed away from him the whole time fastball down and away misses second pitch change up at the bottom of the zone for a ball and he goes away again and David swings at that fastball and then tries to come back with another change up and David will have none of it. He's three for four. Mookie Betts will take a strike. You talk about the Red Sox scoring the first run. When they do this season, they are 25 over 500. Fifty and 25. That's pretty good. Mookie Betts with a two-run double first time up. He's got one for three. Red Sox with 13 hits. And a swing and a miss, and down goes Mookie Betts, and that will be out number three. Red Sox with a hit. One man left, and 9 nothing Boston.
Bottom of the fifth inning, nine nothing Red Sox. All the hits belong to Boston tonight. All 13. Marcelo locked in again, taking out Chris Davis here for the second time. Got him to fly to right in their first encounter. Then it'll be Alonzo and then Healy. For an A's team with a lot of turnover, lots of injuries, lots of young players now appearing in games here in September. I just love the, the tenacity that I'm seeing out of Porcello tonight. Not that we don't generally see that. There's seems like a little extra bounce in his step. He's working quickly. Very confident of the pitches that he wants to throw. Conviction within them. 0 2. Fly ball in the right. Routine play for Betts. And one man gone. Look at this pitch, Dave. It's just like kind of subtle difference. Just a nice little breaking ball. Just perfect location. Just can't hit it off the edge of that plate. That's nasty. Tonight, after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today, cut down day of the NFL. And we'll break down the Pats opening day roster, plus highlights from around the American League. Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Alonzo wailing away. He is 0 for 1, and he's actually in a deep slump. Seven for his last 51 in his yeah. last 17 games. That's why he was out of the lineup yesterday. Got to give him a little bit of a break. This guy's a pretty darn good player, scuffling right now. In the hole now, 0 and 2. Former San Diego Padres spent four years there. That's where the Red Sox are headed next. Healy on deck, bases empty, one away. Red Sox closing in on first place in a tie with Toronto. The Blue Jays have lost again to Tampa Bay. O2. Again going upstairs. We see the pattern. The Oakland A's know the pattern. But he throws that pitch so enticingly close to the strike zone, it's tough for you to stay off of it. You got to offer. One, two to Alonzo. Hammered foul down the left field line, slicing out of play. That's about all you can do with it. Gone up there two times in a row. Let's see if he tries to change the eye level and go down in the zone this time. Maybe a sinking fastball down and away. Or change up. Fastball down. I fly again down the left field line of the corner. Young racing for it. Foul ground. Oh, he caught it. He made the play. Caught it up against the wall down that left field line and thudded into the fence. Well, the Red Sox outfield's made a couple of terrific plays. That was a foul ball, but it doesn't matter. What a great play by Young. Tough to judge, get up against the wall and make the play. He doesn't really have a chance to check out where that wall is. He has to feel it. Nice play. Two down. And now Healy, who is 0 for 1 with a tapper to third. Pitch into right in the air bets there and that does it one two three they go again that has been the case for five straight innings for Porcello tonight.
Top of the sixth inning, Hanley Ramirez in the box. He has ripped the home run tonight, his 20th, and gone one for two. Sandy Leone after him, and then Chris Young, who just made an outstanding foul ball play, catching on up against the padded fence down the line. The Oakland Athletics do not have a base runner tonight against Rick Porcello. And the Red Sox have done all the scoring two runs in the first inning seven runs in the third inning on the strength of 13 hits and roll foul by Hanley if you check into a game like this and you see that there's 13 hits in the game you wouldn't assume that just one team has all of them. Probably by next inning. The gap between Porcello and anybody else sitting next to him will get bigger and bigger. In play to the third baseman on a chop for Healy. Off target throw, but Alonzo off the bag to get him. So one away, time for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox, and here's Adam Pellerin. Now batting, number three, Sandy. And helping the Red Sox seven to five the final score so if the Red Sox win and they lead it nine to nothing here they'll be in a first place tie with Toronto. Going into play on Sunday afternoon. And on this road trip the Sandy takes one down and away. On this trip the Red Sox will encounter the Blue Jays in Toronto for three games. Sandy's gone two for three a single and a double. So after a bit of a chilly spell, he is swinging it again. He was on base four times last night with two hits. Good change up right there from Smith. Bottom dropped out of that pitch. We are into the sixth inning in Oakland. Chris Young on deck. Up and down the lineup, boy, you can see the OPS, the on base percentage, the batting average just going sky high for the Red Sox hitters in the lineup. That one disappeared, a swing and a miss, and down goes Sandy Leon. He fans. He strikes out for the second time tonight. Time to check out the results of our Dunkin Donuts poll question. Should bullpens be banned from the playing field. How do you feel about that. And 84 percent of you would like to see that change. Wow. Here's young he has flied out grounded out taking ball four. That was kind of a landslide victory against what you and I think. <laughs> We're just wrong. Young getting to start tonight in left field. Moncada on deck getting his first major league start tonight. He has his first big league hit and RBI. And he has scored two runs these last two nights. So already making the impact that was suggested. And the 3 1 hammered foul. Left hander Rodriguez, Eduardo Rodriguez on the hill tomorrow. Two and six going in, a 535 earned run average. Against an A's lineup that struggles against. Righties and lefties, but in particular against lefties. High fly to left center field. Smolinski. And the Red Sox go one, two, three. Porcello back at it in just a moment.
Rick Porcello's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Not a single base runner, and here's Wendell. Joey Wendell 0 for 1, he's flat out to center. So another youngster, rookie acquired from the Cleveland Indians in exchange for Brandon Moss back in 2014. The former Red Sox first baseman. The flare but foul and out of the range of Moncada. A lot of former Red Sox are now former A's. This team just a couple of seasons ago was a viable playoff contending type team. Now Moss is gone, Cespedes is gone, Morris is gone, Donaldson. The 0 2 to Wendell. Smolinski on deck and then Maxwell. So this is the bottom third of their order. Looking for tickets to one of Big Poppy's last home games? Visit at Duncan Boston on Twitter. Enter the hashtag DDThanks34 contest for your chance to win a signed baseball and tickets to one of Big Poppy's last home games in October. 0 2 again. High pop into right. Ooh. Here comes Mookie. Plenty of time. And we'll make the catch. You got a little nervous. I did, but then Mookie's closing speed. Stick with me. I'll let you know. <laughs> one away in the sixth. And Smolinski 0 for 1. He's flied out to right. 264 with seven home runs. He played eight years in the minors before he, they finally called him up in Texas two years ago. He's done all right here with Oakland. Pulled. Young can't get it over his head. That bounces up against the fence. And Smolinski is into second base, becomes the first base runner tonight with one down in the sixth inning off of Rick Porcello. So the fans are appreciative of the effort and a lengthy run tonight for Rick. Well, this is a ball. I think that Chris Young, if you gave him a second shot at it, would probably catch this ball. He misjudged the distance of it, and now he takes a, a different route and still almost is able to get his glove on it, but it drops in for the hit. Smolinski with a double. And Maxwell knocks one foul. He is 0 for 1, so their first hit, their first base run. And the way this game was unfolding, and he was just slicing through this lineup. The more he didn't give up a hit, the more I was thinking it's hard for Priscilla to throw a no hitter because he throws too many strikes. It's always around the plate. Sooner or later, someone's going to get some good wood on it. Here's a look from behind Chris Young. Just couldn't stretch up to get that one. It was really misplayed before that effort right there. I really did think of the crack of the bat. He was going to catch it, you know, in the webbing, but he was going to get to it. Another one airborne, but foul down the line. One thing you're not seeing a lot of tonight out of Porcello's ground balls. He's a sinker baller, isn't he? <laughs> not so much anymore. His last few starts, not only does he go up in the zone for strikes, but he has been living upstairs, high in the strike zone. Maxwell struck out first time up. He tags that one, but foul. There's the nice play that Chris Young made last inning up against the wall. Yonder Alonzo hit that one. On a foul. So a man in scoring position for Oakland. And another fly foul out of play. I think on that Smolinski double, I think the ball just got on Chris Young a little quicker. I think he didn't realize it was hit as hard as it was. Sixteen outs for Rick tonight and only three ground outs. One two. Up up again. Does that worry you at all. 
given how well he's pitched up in the zone. It worried me as far as going for a perfect game or a no hitter. Yeah. Because you figure eventually line drive is going to find an alley or go over someone's head. Like it did. But he continues to pitch so effectively. 72 pitches tonight here in the sixth inning. I mean, that's kind of who he's evolved into. A guy above the belt. Trying to put away the nine hitter. With Semi and on deck. And a lot of youngsters in this lineup for Oakland. A lot of rookies getting an opportunity in a lost season for the A's. They're 57 and 77. And so firmly in the basement of the AL West. To again hammered, and that's going to be in the right center field for a base hit. Smolenski will be in to score on a solid single for Maxwell. That'll make it nine to one. So back to back hits. Maxwell just his fourth RBI this season. Now batting shortstop. Maxwell gave him a tough at bat out of that nine spot. Again, a ball above the belt. Smashed right past Petey. He didn't have much of a chance at that one. Here's Semi and 0 for 2. He's flying to center and grounded out to third. In the last couple of innings, some pretty good swings by the A's. Remember the catch that Jackie Bradley made up against the center field fence in the fifth. Now in this inning, the double and a hot smash for a single. That's a cross for a strike. That'll be a good question for Porcello after the game. How did he alter his game plan as this game went on? Obviously, he was attacking the strike zone, but you're ahead nine to one. You don't have to be too fine. Left center, Young on the move. He'll get there, and he puts that away for the second out. Red Sox season ticket holders can experience the best seats, price, and benefits that Fenway has to offer, including potential 2016 postseason opportunities. Call 877 Red Sox 9 today. Two way for Valencia, who has struck out and popped to short. He's in a four for 23 skid. Red Sox ahead 9 to 1. I think this again will be an example of what we're talking about. He is. Just been completely upstairs to Valencia. Watch location of pitches to him. <laughs> he throws the slider down and away. <laughs> Naturally. Of course. Red Sox are 20 and 7 in Porcello starts this season. He has been the man. The Red Sox have scored a lot of runs for Rick. And when they haven't, he's been able to come through anyway, most of the time. I think one of those tougher starts was his start down Tampa Bay, where he was so good and gave up a late, late home run. Yeah, that was to Longoria. He's done that a few times, Longoria, to a lot of pitchers. Beat Atlanta one to nothing back in April. Right to the third baseman Moncada. He'll sling to Pedroia to retire the side. Finally, a couple of hits and a run off Porcello to make it nine to one Boston at the end of six.
65, Stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Adam Peller and Jim Rice will have an update on the American League playoff races and preview Eduardo Rodriguez start tomorrow against the A's. We're on to the seventh. Red Sox with a big lead, nine to one. Moncada, Bradley, Pedroia to hit here against the right hander Smith. Moncada with his first big league hit back in the third inning, and that was a double to drive in a run. So one for three in this one. He takes a strike. Moncada seeing a lot of off speed pitches as a kid making his first big league start. And that one in there for called strike three, it throws him. Let's go back to the dugout last half inning when it came to an end. Uh, Porcello coming up to Chris Young. That's a classy move right here. Porcello just now batting number 25. Reaches Bradley out, taps him on the shoulder. Yeah, it's all okay. First hit of the night over his head. Here's Jackie Bradley. He has two hits. He's got two for three, pair of singles, and an RBI. You can tell Young, though, sitting on the bench, still thinking about it. He seems to be stewing over that. I think he feels like that's a ball that normally he could make the play on. On the corner for a strike on Jackie. <laughs> now everybody can go take their normal seat on the bench, even if it's close to Porcello. Ever part of a no hitter? Sure. A few of them. Which one do you remember most vividly? Well, I remember Alito Perez threw a no hitter at the Yankees. And also, I remember I was playing with the White Sox when Andy Hawkins threw a no hitter at us, but lost the game three to nothing. That's pretty hard to do. They since took that no hitter away from him. Because they say you, you have to win. You know, that's never the second question. Anyone ever asks you, did you throw a no hitter? You say yes. Did they ever say, did you win? They don't say that. Right. Those were a couple of obscure no hitters were part of. Even a worse one, I was playing left field when Joe Cowley threw a no hitter at the Angels. I got pinch hit for like in the seventh inning. I was up changing my shirt, and I didn't even we didn't even realize he was throwing a no hitter. Walked like five guys. He gave up a bunch of bullets. And the announcer of the game said, hey, into the ninth inning, no hitter. Fly down the left field line out of play by Jackie. And he ended up getting it while I'm changing my shirt up in the locker room because none of us even realized he had one. It's amazing you can play in a game for six, seven, eight, nine innings and not know one of the pitchers is throwing a no hitter. It was an ugly no hitter, I got to tell you. Down into the dirt for a ball. I've, I've called eight or nine of them myself, and very fortunate, and called one where there were eight walks. Yeah. And you're Ooh. right; it, it can be ugly. And you forget. Well, I mean, like the Andy Hawkins, we we won, we beat him. He no hit us, and we won. How does that happen? Three two. Second baseman gobbles that up. Wendell on the first, and there are two down. Hawkins had walked a few guys, and then there was a fly ball to left field, and Jim Laritz lost it. And it hit him off the shoulder, and I think three runs scored on that play, and they scored it an error, of course, and that's how the run scored. But yeah, those are not like signature no hitters, no. you know, in all time history. You're talking about. I do like the way you handle it, though. I believe it is your job specifically and our job to inform the listeners. You know, there are there are people that say, "How can you guys talk about a no hitter? He's throwing a no hitter." Well. That's a player's thing. You know, that's what the players do. They don't talk about it. They don't hit. They don't sit next to the pitcher. I'm not a player anymore. You're not a player. Yeah, I wouldn't want someone to tune in a broadcast in the eighth inning. And if the announcer figures, well, I've got something to do with it, so I'm not going to mention it's a no hitter. And someone maybe to go to bed because the score is nine to one, wake up the next morning and realize it was a no hitter or be like me it. and be in that game and not even know it. Right. I was playing in the darn thing didn't know it. Sure. But Roy with two hits tonight. Finally a couple of hits off Rick Porcello this evening. 
Yeah, but I think you're absolutely right. It's your job to inform people what's going on. And maybe get them a little more excited about it. That one tagged into left center field, racing for it, Smolinski, and all the way to the track to run it down. He makes the catch. Bedoya continues to swing it and hit it hard, even when he makes outs. Nine to one, Boston. Fans, I'd like you to meet our. Marcello has been very good tossing a two hitter. David Ortiz has driven in two more runs. Yohan Moncada with his first major league hit. It was a double. And a Red Sox scoring seven times in the third to take a huge lead. And Porcello finally gave one of those back last inning. Facing both Davis and Alonzo here in the seventh. And that's ripped up the middle for a base hit. So vote is on for the first time. He's one for three with a sharp single. He's been in an extended slump as well. Only 24 hits in his last 115 at bats. Like so many other A's. Number two, Chris Davis. But on here, it's their third hit in the last two innings. And brings up Chris Davis, who has flied out to right on two occasions. Nine runs on 13 hits for the Sox, one run on three hits for Oakland. And spins him around, ball one. We were talking about strange no hitters. I was just reminded by Mike Shalen, the longtime Boston writer, that Chris Young, or not Chris Young, Matt Young lost a no hitter to Cleveland. Two to one. His time with the Sox. I was broadcasting for the Marlins many years ago when Kevin Brown, the sinker baller, had a perfect game into the ninth inning. Two down and hit a batter <laughs> and lost it. Did he get the next guy for the no hitter? He did. He struck him out. So at least wound up with the no no. Fouled back to the screen. I never really asked a pitcher before. If they thought that there was a huge difference between throwing a perfect game and a no hitter, you got to be happy with throwing a no hitter. But if you throw the perfect game, is it like that much more elation, or is it like, well, I didn't even walk anybody? Well, it's such a piece of history. They both are, but the perfect game happens so infrequently. I've got to believe there is a difference. High chop to the left side. Moncada waits on it, guns, and gets him. He's got one of those. He does. Down to second base safely is Vogt. He showed that off on his first stop last night and had a bit of a grin as he came back to the dugout. His teammates were impressed. Well, he threw it all the way to first from the 20 yard line. So, yeah, it was pretty impressive. Watch him go. Hey, here's the replay right here. He knows he's got to hurry a little bit. Zip. 
and it's so far and it's early. We've seen him just a couple games here. But he's been very accurate too. A lot of guys that try to throw the ball really hard over to first base sometimes don't know where it's going. Alonzo 0 for 2. Alonzo started the University of Miami, but before that, at Coral Gables High School in Miami, Mike Lowell's alma mater. He was born in Havana, Cuba, and his family defected to the United States when he was young. The 1 0 through there for a call strike. And Dave, just to finish that thought, I think if I'm pitching and I'm, I got a no hitter and it's late, I'm into the eighth inning. And I fall behind a guy, a good hitter, 3-1. Yeah, maybe I throw him another changeup, and if I miss, no big deal. I walk him. I'll go out to the next guy to keep my no hitter going. But I'm not going to groove one, lose everything. Sure. Popped up back toward the netting, but that's going to be out of play. That would, I think, would be the big difference between the pride of a perfect game and the, the joy of a no hitter. I wonder too tonight in Porcello's case how much the score has dictated his pitching style. Big early lead. He's been thrown up in the zone. He's looking to get quick outs. He's allowing them effectively to, to hit the ball. Yeah, that was kind of my earlier point. He's throwing too many strikes to throw a no hit. It's like, I got a big lead. I'm going to attack. I'm going right at you. It's not like I'm trying to hit too many corners. I want to pitch my game, but it. Not going to be pitching around, guys. I'm going right after everybody. Sooner or later, someone's getting a hit. In the end, you're looking for the win. Yeah. But at some point, the fact that you're throwing a perfect game, as he was earlier through the first five innings, it's got to creep into your mind. Sure. You hear pitchers say all the time, well, I really didn't know that I was throwing a no hitter until about the eighth inning. I never really believed that. Because somebody says, hey, look, they don't have a hit. Or you know it just because you're looking out at the scoreboard all the time if you're not keeping that close track. That's called being locked in, I would say, maybe overly so. But I've heard, and you've heard pitchers say that. Well, I didn't really realize I was going for a no hitter until around the, uh, the eighth inning. I find that very hard to believe. Maybe it was Joe Cowley you were talking to. <laughs> I didn't know he had one. I mean, I think I made a diving catch in left field. There was a couple of great plays, five or six walks. There were guys on base all over the place. We're like, this can't possibly be a no hitter. Vote at second and the 3 2. And swung on and filed away. I think my favorite all time was the one that Mark Burley threw. I want to say it was a perfect game. Remember the catch that Wise made in center field? In the game, left center field. I mean, took a home run away and bobbled it and then had to make a second catch on it. Remember and, that play? Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't happen. In no hitters, there's very few great plays made. It's just kind of a mundane, we just go about our business, a couple decent plays, and then the game's over and you're looking, what? No hits. That was unbelievable, the Wise play. I was with the Dodgers uh, when they were no hit by five Mariners. Line foul by Alonso. Yeah, the combined no hitters are easier ones to forget what's happening, you know, if you're involved in the game. Yeah. When you've got three, four, five different pitchers. Five guys. You should be gone. Somebody gave up again. Somewhere along. Red Sox leading this one nine to one in the seventh. As Porcello fires again, and that one tagged into right field. Betts turning around, and that one is high off the wall. Here comes Bolt rounding. Wow. Throw to second base. Got him. Cut him down there. What a throw. Come on, what can he do, Dave? Unbelievable. Bolt does score on the play to make it nine two. But he strikes again. He gets back to the wall in such great position to make this play. And that's what does make it. Watch him turn his left shoulder away, catch that ball and collect, and now let it rip. 
and watch where this throw goes. Pinpoint perfect. All Bogey has to do is catch it. Look at how great position. Just amazing to watch. A second baseman two years ago. So I know he's doing everything. He's not getting a lot of discussion as far as gold glove is concerned. But how about the slew of plays he's made recently. Yeah. Well it's kind of tough to break into that gold glove conversation. A guy who's second year in the big leagues. And when the guy to your right. Is the best outfielder in the game. A lot of the attention goes there. That's 12 outfield assists. <laughs> 12. It's about as many as Jackie Bradley has. Yeah, Jackie has 12. Nice combo between two guys. You know what's going to happen? They're going to start getting fewer and fewer. Not right. because they're going to fade, but because people will stop running. And that's the ultimate respect when they stop running because they know they're going to get thrown out. A lot of bad outfielders get a lot of assists because you're running on that guy all the time. Eventually, you're going to throw a couple guys out. But that's not the case here. Nope. Man, has he been showing off his arm? Amazing guys. Of course, Jackie. Jackie does that routinely. That one golfed high and deep into left field, but Young with room near the line. And there to make the catch to retire the side. The A's do get another run down 9 to 2 after 7. Top half of the eighth inning underway here as Xander Bogart steps in. He has an RBI hit tonight. One for four that came during that third inning when the Red Sox pile up seven runs and chase Daniel Mingdon, the starter, out of the ball game. And the Red Sox have been sailing since then. They had nine to two. They have out hit Oakland 13 to four. Little dribbler on the infield. Healy at third with a bare hand. Throws. Safe at first base. First baseman came off the bag. And Xander Bogarts is on with an infield hit. Bogey gets out of the box and down the line as quick as any right handed hitter you'll see. This is a, an extremely Ladies difficult play. Healy has an excellent arm, but look at how quickly Bogarts is already in full stride. Safe. Boy, that's so nice to get hits like that. What did he say? He was off the bag here too is one of the reasons. It doesn't look to me like he was off the bag. I think he just beat it.
That's a very nice play by Healy too. You just can't catch up with bogey. You see a little separation there at the end. So Aaron Hill is going to hit for David Ortiz who had three hits and drove in two runs before stepping aside. So big night for Poppy. The second night in a row someone's pinch hit for Ortiz and the guy gets his only at bat and they, he gets booed by the crowd because it's all Red Sox fans. And it really feels like it. Once again here on the West Coast, pretty amazing. Line shot. Look out. That is off semi and in into left field. Rounding second base Bogarts. He's on his way to third. He'll be in standing up. A hot smash by Hill. On what could be ruled a base hit. Yeah, you know me normally, Dave. I, I think you should catch the ball, but this ball was scalded. He had to move a couple steps to his right, then had to field a short hop. I'd say this is a hit. Short hop tough one up there you gotta you gotta be perfect if you're not the ball ends up in left field like that one did you are going to rule that an error Wow. on Semyon who made one yesterday throwing made 35 last year that's working Maybe against that's him why here. yeah Mookie bets now runners at first and third I'm tough on that too I think you're in the big leagues you should catch the ball I think there's way too many plays that are scored hits in the big leagues today. But I would sometimes you say how hard did the guy hit it and how bad did the guy want to catch it. If you hit it so hard the guy doesn't want to catch it. That's a hit. <laughs> it was smashed. Mookie reaching 100 RBIs tonight. With a first inning double to chase in Pedroia and Ortiz. Red Sox got off to a quick start again. And after three led nine to nothing. Ooh. You don't see Mookie miss that pitch very often. Mookie's wheelhouse. Inner half of the plate. Woo. He lays off and that misses down low. So three balls and a strike on Mookie. Hanley Ramirez on deck. Hanley's homer tonight. The three one a strike. So all filled up on bets. Bogarts and Hill aboard near the eighth inning. Red Sox looking for a share of first place tonight. If they win, that'll be the case. They'll be tied with Toronto. And it is ball four, and the bases are going to be loaded for Hanley Ramirez. Step up your hockey game with Bruins Academy. It's a show just for kids who love the game of hockey. Don't miss an all new episode tomorrow at noon. And to catch up on previous episodes, visit bostonbruins.com slash Bruins Academy. A lot of very happy Red Sox fans here tonight in Northern California. Feels like about two thirds of the crowd, maybe more. Probably more now. Hanley with a fly to right, a bullet of a home run, a walk and a grounder to third. And this is not a good time to want to face Hanley Ramirez. Of course, he recently had a grand slam at Fenway. He has 88 RBIs. That was a really good breaking ball right there because Hanley was sitting on a breaking ball. Seven career grand slams for Hanley. As of the one he hit the other day against Tampa Bay. That turned that game completely around. Red yes, Sox were down did. four to one. Cut and a miss. 0 and 2. Yeah, they were staring at a kind of lethargic loss at that point in time. Changed everything around. The buzz in the stadium, a little more life in the step of every one of the Red Sox players. And he's homered in four of his last seven games. Man at every base. 
and he takes a ball. Here is that grand slam. Oh. That was into the monster seats very quickly. It's a lot like his home run tonight, although tonight was more of a straight line. Yeah. Seed out of here. One, two. Chop foul. Hanley's such a good off speed hitter that he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. And when you feel like you're ahead in the count as a pitcher, not necessarily true. You can mess around, you can try to get him to chase. He doesn't chase that often. And if you happen to get too cute with a breaking ball and hang it, goodness. Well, he drove in three runs last night. Another one so far tonight. Looking for some more as he takes a pitch into the dirt. Two and two. You get the left hander Coulomb throwing in their bullpen. And because the bullpens are on the playing surface, we can see that. Bogarts at third, Hill at second, Betts at first, and a high twisting fly down the right field line. Valencia chasing, but a foul ball could not get to it. And Fernando Abad loosening in the socks pen. Really the worst part about having the bullpens where it is here is that you you make your pitcher a little vulnerable to foul balls. And so you have to have someone standing in front of you protecting you. One of the ball attendants or a backup catcher or Daniel Levange over there. Someone's got to be there in case someone fouls a ball off down there. It might hit your pitcher. Yeah, a certain amount of trust in that kid standing right there, too. 2-2. Two, two. Roll foul as he hangs in there. Smith up to 62 pitches out of the bullpen. Man. He's done a pretty good job, though. In fact, the Red Sox have not scored since they got the seven in the third. But lately, they have really been coming through with the bases loaded. Went through such an awful stretch. And now it's looked better. Ooh, cut on a miss. Down goes Hanley. He strikes out. So not on this occasion. One man away. Leon will try and clean it up here. Stepping Stones for Stella is a nonprofit organization providing outdoor buggies to disabled children, and they'll be hosting a beach volleyball tournament with Nesson on September 10th. Visit steppingstonesforstella.org to register your team of four today. Sandy with a couple of hits, a double, a single. He's gone two for four. Red Sox leading this one nine to two in the top half of the eighth inning in Oakland. And he pops that one up into foul ground. Three men giving chase for the catcher lunging. Can't get it. Maxwell went down on the shin guards and eventually into his dugout. They could not reach it. Pretty good indication right here of what you talked about at the beginning of this series. So much foul ground. When was the last time you saw kind of a weak little pop up that stays on the field of play in foul territory that nobody catches? Doesn't happen in most ballparks. That would probably be in the third or fourth row in any other the park, but here you got room to run. Bases jammed up here for the Red Sox with one man out. And a sweeping breaking ball in there for a strike on Sandy. Only 11 at bats with the bases loaded in his career, but five hits and seven RBIs. This kid has a nasty breaking ball, too. 
Up the middle. Stopped by Semi and Bottle. Got the out at second base, and that's all they get as Xander Bogarts comes in to score. And the Red Sox hit double digits now 10 to 2. Semi in with a bobble on a potential double play ball. This is what you talked about. Just not really a sure handed shortstop. 35 errors last season. That's a ball that you should scoop up and turn the double play on, and it didn't work. The A's could be out of this inning. So Leon does get an RBI on that, and here comes Chris Young with runners at first and third. Red Sox with an eight run lead here late. Young has gone 0 for 3 with a walk and a run. Hits a high fly ball into left field. But Davis is back there with room. And that will retire the side. Red Sox add one more. 10 to 2 Red Sox in the air. And Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Buyatoyota.com, Toyota's website for deals. Bob's Discount Furniture. Everybody saves at Bob's Discount Furniture in store or at mybobs.com. And by Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. Red Sox with a commanding lead here in Oakland. 10 to 2. Dave O'Brien, Steve Lyons, Garen Austin alongside. They have out hit Oakland. 14 to 4. Fernando Abad will take over for Rick Porcello, who's in line for the win. Ryan Hannigan will be his catcher. So a whole new battery here for the Sox. Abad tossed one inning in Wednesday's victory against Tampa Bay with a couple of strikeouts. Gets the first man to swing and pop it up, Wendell. And put away by Marrero, who has taken over his shortstop. Get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Dickinus Medical Center First Aid Station and is located behind Section 12 on the lower concourse at Fenway. Visit BIDMC.org. Travis Shaw now also into the ball game at first base for the Red Sox. So a few changes for John Farrell who now has a 10 to 2 lead. Hernandez also in at second base. As mentioned, Hernandez at second base. Smolenski with a check swing. That's going to be a fair ball. Moncada gobbles it up and gets him. <laughs> Even off his wrong foot. 
He can fire it over there. Just well, like that, two down. I mean, if nothing else, you know he's just a superb athlete. I mean, obviously, everybody in Sox Nation hoping this guy's going to be a phenom player. Off the wrong foot, let it go. And you cannot outrun that. That's a plus arm. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, there's a, another excellent young player just begging to get back in the lineup. And I talked to Andrew today as Maxwell steps in, takes a strike. He's starting to do some running. He's feeling really good. And he knows he dodged a bullet. Yeah. You know that play where he hurt his knee? I said, I thought you really did your ankle. And he said, I, I didn't even think about my ankle. I, he said, I didn't realize until I went and looked at the replay. Backing up is the right fielder Brock Holt. He'll haul that in, and one, two, three, they go. Very easy inning for a bond. Still 10 to 2, Boston. Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Red Sox ahead here 10 to 2. Daniel Colomb is coming out of their bullpen for his 26th appearance. He has a high earned run average at 5-11. First man in will be Moncada against him. You want Moncada in this one with a double, his first major league hit. He has gone one for four. And also his first big league RBI. And our first chance to see him in the right handed hitters batters box. And a base hit. Swing to the very first pitch. Right up the middle. So he's two for five. So far in his young career, he has been a better left handed hitter, but he gets right up there and bangs out a base hit in his first opportunity right handed. Not wasting any time. Gets a first pitch fastball. Good looking swing, not trying to do too much with it. Go right back up the middle. There's nobody there. And with that physique, he is right at home on a baseball diamond slash football field. <laughs> Jackie Bradley with two hits tonight, two for four, two singles, and an RBI. And a lefty deals. In there for a strike. We're in the ninth inning in Oakland. Muncie taking over in right field. Max Muncie. Brett Eidner is their new left fielder. Cut on and missed. And Jackie Bradley is retired down on strikes. 
Chad Pinder, the new shortstop. And you're up to date on all the changes as Hannigan hits for the first time in this one. He snapped an 0 for 21 last night. He's hitting in Dustin Pedroia's spot. PD tonight with two more hits. Went two for four, scored twice. Hit and the ball just, hard the other two times. He did. Jeez. Making those outs. Doesn't make many outs. Ten game hitting streak for Dustin. That one sock fouled by Hannigan. And the Red Sox offense in high gear once again. With 15 hits and 10 runs. Yeah, but if they don't explode here in this inning, their scorage average is going to go down against <laughs> well against the A's. Oakland. Averaging 14 a game against the A's. Scoring at a historic rate against Oakland. Tampa Bay knocked off Toronto much earlier, seven to five. So the Red Sox are looking like a team about to be tied for first place here in early September. It's a good time to be doing it. It's not how you start. At the moment, a half game out pending the outcome of this one. Tazawa loosening in the bullpen down the right field line, and certainly looking like the Red Sox are going to be playing for a sweep tomorrow afternoon with Eduardo Rodriguez against the right hander Kendall Graveman. It's going to be tougher against Graveman than the first two starters in the series by a long shot. Yes, it is. He's got some good numbers. He's been in the rotation the entire season. Which is not to say the Red Sox can't hang 12 or 13 on him. There's a base hit in the left field. So Hannigan with a couple of hits in his last two trips. Runners at first and second. In front of Travis Shaw, who will bat for the first time tonight after a huge night last night, in which he drove in five runs. Number 47. He had three extra base hits yesterday going three for six with a home run and five RBIs. Travis Shaw who doesn't get the chance to play against many left handers gets the opportunity in this game and faces the lefty. I think Maxwell walked out there and said hey he loves to jump on a first pitch fastball let's be careful here. One out two on 16 hits and counting for the Red Sox. So they throw on the breaking ball which makes sense. And CBS Health is a proud supporter of stand up to cancer. We invite you to share your hashtag reasons to stand up by posting a photo or video of why you stand up to cancer and tag at CBS in action. Poke foul back to his home run swing last night. This was a bomb. We talk about it a lot. The ball doesn't travel well here at nighttime unless you hit it like this. And man, it did travel. Bounced off the seats and down the alley, took an exit, got on the bark. Down into the dirt for a ball. I think Travis was taking offense to some of that conversation about maybe he was a forgotten man with Moncada up now and John Farrell talking about the platoon between Hill and Moncada at third base. Well, he certainly doesn't want to become a forgotten man and it seems like Travis Shaw plays his best baseball when his backs up against the wall a little bit. First and second one down. I mentioned it last night. The Travis has four times this season had a game in which he has driven in five runs. Season 66 RBIs. He lashes that one foul. Yeah, 
Aaron Hill on deck and the left hander with a 2 2. He got a piece of that one. In fact, the only other player in the major leagues this season who has had four games of five RBIs other than Travis Shaw, Mookie Betts. Yeah. It's amazing. Red Sox have now scored 750 runs. On the season, tops in the majors. Cut on and missed, and down he goes, strike three. There's that lefty on lefty changeup that we see a lot more of these days. This is a pitch that Nobody. Shaw will swing Nobody. right through. Well, as it was a breaking Aaron ball, Hill. I guess, wasn't a changeup. So here's Hill. Reached on air by the shortstop in the eighth inning. Aaron hitting 194. Recently had a big hit in that come from behind victory over Tampa Bay last Wednesday when he snapped an 0 for 20 with an RBI single. Red Sox would win that to split the homestand. And came out here against Oakland and pummeled the A's last night 16 to 2 much of the same tonight 10 to 2. John Farrell's ball club looking like they're going to be playing for a sweep tomorrow. And will be facing another team in the basement in their division in the San Diego Padres after this one. High pop foul out of play to the right. And it's two and one on Hill. If you're Kendall Graveman, do you want to take the ball tomorrow knowing what the Red Sox have done the last two nights? But if he learned anything, if he has a good breaking ball, you got to think he's going to use it tomorrow. Smith did a great job with his breaking ball in this game. Kind of throttled the Red Sox offense a little bit. Socked it to left field for a base hit. Here comes another run. Moncada's in to score. Man, does he get in fast. So fast. So easy. 11 to 2. And he scores for the second time. And I think he might have another gear. <laughs> if he needs it. Aaron Hill with the RBI hit. Like I said, if you're a Red Sox hitter and Moncada standing anywhere on the bases when you come up, you're smiling. So tomorrow's starters, Rodriguez and Graveman. Not a long start last time out for Eduardo five and a third on that Sunday against Kansas City gave up five earned runs. Looking to get back into a groove. That'll be in there for a strike on Brock Holt. He came on to sub in for Mookie Betts. Mookie had two RBIs tonight to reach 100 for the season. Two away but two on. And he fouls it at the plate. And oh, by the way, the Red Sox scoring more runs with two outs. Well, the attack has been relentless. Here in the East Bay. Hanning in his second, Hill at first. Rock hitting 262 with six home runs. John Farrell getting him a late inning at bat would indicate he'll play tomorrow and that'll be in there for strike three side retired Red Sox keep on adding on runs now 11 to 2 as we go to the last half of the ninth in Oakland.
on this and is brought to you by Southwest Airlines transparency low fares and nothing to hide back for the last half of the ninth inning and Tozawa called on to close this one out and ERA at 4.63 and working in mop up duty at this point with the Red Sox on top big here in Oakland. Now batting number 18, Chad Pinder. And Chad Pinder will lead things off against him. With the Red Sox in command, 11 to 2. And on the verge of tying up the Toronto Blue Jays for first place in the division. And Tazawa's first one. Inside ball one. And if you're wondering why Bob Melvin made changes to his lineup in the ninth inning. Changes that he made were guys that are going to make an at bat right here. So he got them into play defensively in the field, and then they can get themselves loose a little bit and show up and make it at bat here in the ninth. Muncie on deck. Pinder and Muncie, two of the guys that showed up late. And a 2 0. As we can see on our pitch track. Look what showed up, Dave. Has shown up here in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. I I had made my own there for a while. I I, I tracked one of uh, Big Poppy's at bats. I have my drawings here and everything. It's truly sad to watch you do that. Yeah. Devote company time to that venture. It was a waste of time. In there for a strike. I'm glad it's back. Does that mean it's going to be here tomorrow? Well, I don't know. You know, it's a day game tomorrow. Pitch zone may have better things to do. We dare ask, will it show up tomorrow? Here comes the the three one pitch. Drive into right field on the move is Brock Holt. It's going to be over his head. Skips up into the scoreboard and Pinder into second base with a stand up double as the throw gets away, but backed up along the line by Moncada. So Pinder with a drive to right field. Tazawa just having a horrible time getting a clean inning or anything close to it. Now batting number 12, Max Muncy. Now tomorrow at 3.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live, presented by DCU. Adam Pellerin and Jim Rice will preview Eduardo Rodriguez's start tomorrow against the A's. DCU is Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? So here's Muncie, just a 182 hitter, but he has hit seven home runs. Nobody out of man in second for the A's here in the bottom of the ninth. Red Sox ahead 11 to 2. Holt converging on this. He'll make the play. The runner will tag. Here's the throw to third, and he is going to be safe somehow getting in there. Kind of tried to get the tag down. Holt made a good strong throw. We'll see how Moncada makes the tag. He tags him pretty high. This is one of the things he's going to have to continue to learn as a third baseman. Get that tag down on the base. He has to reach for it, slap it down on the bag. He missed with the tag. Yep. Never really puts a tag on him. You got to throw that glove hand down there right at the base. Don't go reaching for the runner. So Still learning how to play third. He is an excellent throw out of right field. Brock Holt should have had an outfield assist there. One more look at it. Mancada had to reach for the ball a little bit. Might have been safe anyway, even if it was a good tag. Matt McBride will be the batter. He'll hit for votes. With a man at third base. And one man out here in the ninth inning. And that's in there for a strike. This is, by the way, the 21st time the Red Sox have reached 15 or more hits in a game. 21 times. That's the most in the majors. No other team has more than 11 such games. Red Sox have done it 21 times. Hit the Raj.
However, this is a season low of 11 runs against Oakland. I know their average is going way down. I mean, when you're averaging 14 runs a game and you have a game like this, now we're going to have to refigure things. Red Sox getting seven of those runs in the third inning. And then didn't score for four innings. Although at that point it hardly mattered. He scored a single run each of the last couple of innings. You throw a seven spot on someone. That's what they call a wipeout inning. One two pitch is lob foul back out of play by McBride. Now you see the difference in the way Tazawa pitches now. He doesn't have a whole lot of confidence in the velocity of his fastball. He was used to be one of the most consistent fastball throwers out of that bullpen. It was 94 almost every time with a decent amount of movement. He's only thrown a couple fastballs here tonight. They were 92. He's gone to the breaking ball quite often. The one two pitch. Trying to hold up, and he did, according to the first base up night. Two and two. Man at third, one gone. And you know, one of the other weapons that Tazawa used to use with effectiveness was a split finger. Almost never see it anymore. Yeah, I think that's an issue of trust big time. He's left a lot of them up and hittable in the past. Fly ball into left field. Hinder back to tag. Young underneath. They'll make the play and the runner will hold. And they're two away. So two down in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Eidner will be next. It may be the last man to hit tonight. Red Sox ahead 11 to 2. Now batting number 39. Brent Eidner. He's hitting just 205 with five home runs. Another rookie who made his major league debut earlier this year with Kansas City and then got traded for Billy Burns in July. And Tazawa looking to end it on him. And get the win for Rick Porcello, who would improve to 19 and 3. He flirted with perfection through five and a third innings tonight before finally giving up a double over the head of Chris Young. And eventually surrendered four hits and two runs, but another strong outing for Rick Porcello. And you have simply come to rely on that as a Red Sox fan every fifth day. A little bit of a different outing for Purcello too with just the two strikeouts but everything else perfect. And the Red Sox would be 21 and 7 when Purcello is on the mound. Run him out there. <laughs> How about this his next start he'll be bidding for 20 wins. How about that what a long time since you even thought about a pitcher on the Red Sox staff at 20 wins. The 0 2 from Tozawa. Swung on and missed, and that'll do it. The Red Sox win this one again, going away 11 to 2, and they are in a first place tie with the Toronto Blue Jays. Identical records here in early September of 76 and 59. A first place tie Boston and Toronto and the Red Sox Adam will go for the sweep tomorrow afternoon here in Oakland.